Welcome to another Itsy Bitsy Build mini tutorial. In this video, we're making mini serving trays in four different styles created with the Cricut Maker. This project contains both 1 12th scale and 1 6th scale dimensions. To skip ahead to your favourite design, don't forget to use the chapters in the timeline below. For our first tray design, I took inspiration from this round bamboo serving tray. It's got a deep wood colour with black accents around the outside. First I captured the full size dimensions to scale down later. So to do this, head on down to the description and then I click read more and it will give you those dimensions there which you can enter into Cricut Design Space. I'm using the PC version of Cricut Design Space and we're going to start with the base of the tray. So click on shapes and then click circle. Then grabbing the full scale dimensions and entering that number in the size section of Cricut Design Space. So to make the edges here, we need to calculate the perimeter of our circle. Google has a handy calculator for working this out. We just need to calculate the radius. We know that the width or circumference is 38 centimeters or 15 inches and the radius will be half of this. So we can enter 38 centimeters divided by two and that's our radius. Then head on back to the tool and enter that in and you will get the perimeter. Go back to Cricut Design Space. We're gonna click shapes and then add a square. Then see this little padlock in the bottom left hand corner? We wanna unlock it. That unlocks the aspect ratio so that we can make a rectangle. Remembering that our tray has two handles and we need them to be precisely opposite from each other. And the easiest way to do this is to create two rectangles and then we'll add the handles and join them together at the end with the weld tool. So I've halved our perimeter calculation and entered into the size section which makes one half. You may need to add an additional centimeter or two for your rectangle, depending on the thickness of the wood that you're working with. I also know the height of the tray is six centimeters, so I enter that as the height. Now let's make the handle. So I click on the shapes tab and create a square, drag that over and unlock the aspect ratio. And then we just want to drag it so that it kind of looks like a handle and it fits snugly inside of our bigger rectangle. And if we go back to our reference picture, you'll notice that the handles have these curved edges. So to make this, drag the handle away from your rectangle, then go into shapes and click circle. Drag your circle over to the handle, and then we're going to use the bottom right hand corner to resize the circle. And what you're aiming for is that the circle has the same width as your rectangle. Drag it over so that the top of your circle fits precisely with your rectangle resize the bottom as well so that it looks rounded. Once you're really happy with the placement, click on the circle and then go over to the right hand side and click duplicate. Then you're going to drag your duplicate circle over to the other side and line it up precisely. To line them up perfectly, highlight all three objects, click align and then click center vertically. And what that will do is it will make sure that it's perfectly centered. Now we're going to join the three objects together. So highlight all three and go to the bottom right hand corner and click weld and this will create one uniform handle shape and we can manipulate the size you can click the aspect ratio lock there make it thicker smaller so that it fits with your needs once you're happy with your handle place it over the bigger rectangle highlight both and then we're going to click align and center and this will center the handle inside of your rectangle right in the middle now we're going to slice the handle out of the rectangle. So highlight both, go over to the bottom right hand corner and click slice. And when you move the bigger rectangle away, you can see that your handle has been cut out. Now we're going to duplicate this shape so that we create the full length of our circle. Drag that second shape over so that it's just touching the other one. Highlight both shapes and then go up to align and click center vertically. I also recommend zooming in much closer so you can see any gaps and just make sure that they're overlapping. 
Now let's join these two rectangles together. So we're going to highlight both, go to the bottom right hand corner and click weld. And this shape is now the perimeter of our circle. Now we're ready for scaling our project down in 1 6 scale and 1 12 scale. I really like inch calculator. You can enter your preferred scale and then enter the full size dimensions and then it converts it to your scale. I'll pop all of these dimensions in the description below. And here we have our finished 1 12th and 1 6th scale. Now you might be thinking, don't we need to create a shape for the vinyl? I've actually got a really cool workaround which I'll show you so you don't need to cut out so many items. I'm using 1mm balsa wood. It's a pretty flexible fibrous wood, perfect for this project. And if you bend with the grain, you can actually achieve a curved shape, which is perfect for our circular tray. Just don't bend it against the grain because you will cause some breaks and snaps. Here's my handy dandy time saving trick. So on top of our wood piece, we're actually going to place a piece of black vinyl. And this will achieve the black shiny look you see on the outside of our tray. And then we'll have the wooden parts on the inside. I also rolled a brayer over the top of the wood so that the vinyl was really stuck down and trimmed any edges off before sticking it onto a Cricut mat. You need to use the purple strong grip mat and then I've also used this painter's tape to really secure the wood to the mat. Don't forget to move your star wheels all the way to the right when cutting wood. We use the Cricut knife blade, place it into your Cricut machine and lock it in place. The Cricut will usually make 14 passes, but I recommend three for this soft wood. And you'll notice it cuts right through the black vinyl as well as our wooden piece. So here we have the base of our 1 6 scale tray. You can see the wood on one side. And then if I peel up the other pieces, you've got your handles as well. And here are the pieces in 1 6 scale. I've actually used a brown texture for staining the wood and this is because it allows the wood grain to show underneath. So we just lightly brush across all of our pieces and don't forget to do the edges and sides. Now remember my wood is flexible if you're bending with the grain, but if the wood that you're using isn't flexible, you can always soak it in water and then use a bottle to kind of bend it into shape until it dries. Double check your wood piece goes all the way around. Then place a small amount of glue on the outside of your circle and then place your handle section around the outside. And there we have our bamboo circular tray. We've got black around the edge and at the bottom and then we've got wood that's stained on the inside. And these are perfect for any dollhouse really. You can put little trinkets on them, put them in any room of the house. For our second tray, I've created this rustic look with a 3D pattern. I was inspired by this rustic white tray. Just like we did with our round tray, we're going to take the full size dimensions and scale it down later. In Cricut Design Space, create a square under the Shapes tab. This square will be the base of our tray. Enter the full size dimensions under Size. And to create the decorative part, we need to duplicate this square. So click on your square and go over to the top right hand side of the page and click Duplicate. Then change the colour by clicking at the top there click on grey so we know we need to cut this from a different material and the Cricut will place it on a separate mat. Now let's grab a pattern we like. So go over to the left hand side and click on images and then we're going to search for the word tile and this will bring up a number of results that will fit nicely into the square that we're using. Scroll through the designs and you want to find a pattern that has thicker lines so that the Cricut can easily cut it out. I went with this one. And to add it on the canvas, just click Insert Image. Once inserted, simply drag it over and then resize it to the dimensions of your tray. 
I'm going to show you two different ways to etch this pattern onto your tray. We will try the deboss method, which looks a little bit more subtle, like you can see here. Then we'll also do a version where the pattern is cut from cardstock. So to deboss this pattern, select our pattern square, click on operation, and then scroll all the way down to deboss under the draw tab. And the Cricut will change the setting to deboss instead of cut. Now you do need the deboss tool to use this function. Next, we need to join the deboss to the cardstock so that the Cricut knows to deboss over the cardstock. So line both of those squares up. You can use the align tool here to kind of center everything. To join everything, highlight both squares and then go to the bottom right hand corner and click attach. So now we've effectively got two layers. We have our wood piece at the bottom and then we have our cardstock at the top, which has a deboss pattern. Now let's make the handles. So again, go over to the shapes tab, create a square. Referencing our full scale tray, we know that the height is 5.5 centimeters. So clicking the padlock to unlock the aspect ratio, we go up and we change the height to six centimeters just to round things up and I know the width of each side is 40 centimeters so enter that too. Now let's make the handles so we go over to shapes create a square make sure that that little padlock is unlocked so that we can make a rectangle and then drag it over and create a rectangle that really fits snugly inside the bigger rectangle and looks like a handle. Then center everything by highlighting the big and small rectangle click align and then click center. Then just like the circular tray, highlight both and then click slice to cut the handle out of the side. Then duplicate that side for the other end of your tray. I'm going to scale everything down to 1 6th and 1 12th scale now. So using inch calculator, we enter those dimensions into Cricut Design Space. So now we need to create the other two handles and you need to make it a little bit longer to account for the thickness of the wood that you'll be using. So I'm using one millimeter thick wood. I need to add an extra two millimeters, one on either end so that it fits. Once you've made one, you can simply duplicate it and put it on the other side. And here we have our Cricut mats. So this one will be cut from wood. And this one has a cardstock material and we're going to deboss. This is the deboss tool with the quick housing unit. Just click it into place, then lock it into your Cricut machine. I've used black cardstock for debossing, which I'm then going to paint white so you can really see the detail. To achieve a rustic look, I used this crackle glue, which I mixed with this white acrylic paint. Then make sure your paintbrush is pretty dry when painting this on because you don't want a thick coat, you want to be able to see that detail underneath. And this is what it looks like with the deboss method. It's pretty subtle, but I like the design and I think it would look really good on the trays as well. To cut this pattern out instead of debossing, you'll need to click cut and then basic cut. And then your Cricut will cut that pattern out instead. You'll need the fine point blade for cutting cardstock. And you can see all of those really intricate details. Again, I'm using that one millimeter wood, which I've taped down to the mat and we need to use the purple strong rip mat. And here are all the wood pieces cut out. And I've carefully peeled up the cardstock so that we can stick these tiny features onto our tray. I've used a fine tipped glue bottle to stick all of these tiny pieces into place. Then I painted these black areas with the same glue and acrylic white paint that I'd created earlier. 
Next, I painted all of the wooden pieces in just plain, regular white acrylic paint. Don't forget the sides. Apply some glue to your base tray. Then stick your cardstock design on top of that and make sure it's really well stuck down. Once dried, apply some glue to the edges with a fine tipped glue bottle. Then glue the shorter handles on first before gluing the longer handles. These trays would be perfect for a beach house. I've even got these tiny shells which you, know, you can put on as a bit of decoration. Our third tray is this hexagonal design and I took inspiration from this black and white tray. Again, I'm using the full size dimensions before scaling it down. In Cricut Design Space, click on Shapes and create a hexagon. Resize it to the correct dimensions and then duplicate the shape. Color the first hexagon brown so we know we need to cut it from wood. And with the other hexagon, we're going to cut a pattern from white gloss vinyl. To find your perfect design, click images and then look for the word pattern. I really liked this design, so just click on it and then click insert image, which will place it on your canvas. Then resize it so that it really fits with the size and dimensions of your hexagon. You also want to pick a really good center point. So noticing those two lines at the top and bottom, I tried to line them up perfectly. And then to center it, you can highlight both objects and click a line at the very top of the page and then click center. To make our vinyl cut piece, we're going to highlight both the pattern and the hexagon underneath and then go over to the slice tool in the bottom right hand corner. And this will slice the pattern out of your hexagon, leaving you with just the pattern behind in a hexagon shape. I also changed the color to white just so I could see what it would look like. We're going to make the handles exactly like we made them in the other two trays, except this tray has six sides. You should aim to add one to two millimeters to each side so that you can cover all areas of your tray. Again, scale things down to one sixth or one twelfth scale. I've used this glossy vinyl for our cutout pattern. Again, I used one millimeter thick wood and these are the pieces I've cut out. I painted the wood in this aqua paint. It really only needed one coat to achieve the desired colour. Once the wood was dry, I used a piece of sticky tape to transfer the vinyl onto our wood. I ended up redoing this bit because I had a piece missing at the bottom and I also forgot to weed that little triangle. Just like the other trays, apply a small amount of glue along the edges and then glue all the sides down. This would be perfect for a coffee table or a dining table. I've put some little orange juice on the tray and doesn't that look cute? Last but not least is this marble tray and I took inspiration from this tray I saw online. Starting with a square, with the padlock unlocked, we're going to resize it to the full scale dimensions and I'm going to color it brown so I know I need to cut that particular mat from wood. To create the sides of our tray, we're going to duplicate this rectangle three times. And then drag it over and you're gonna try and offset the third triangle with the second one and then change the side. You can also unlock the aspect ratio, but you want to get a thick edge around that rectangle. Once you're happy with the dimensions and everything centered, highlight both and we're going to cut the small rectangle out of the big one using the slice tool. When you drag those pieces away, you can see we've got a frame. 
and I'm going to duplicate that frame four times. Scale everything down to 1 6th and 1 12th scale using inch calculator. Just like our first tray, I'm going to stick the vinyl directly on the wood so we don't need to cut anything out separately. However, we do need to make a strip for around the outside of the tray. To create the correct length of our strip, we simply need to add all four sides together. Create a square under the shapes tab. Click this little padlock to unlock the aspect ratio. I've then changed the color to gray so Cricut places it on a separate mat. Then using our trusty calculator, I enter the height and width of our rectangle and then multiply that by two because there are four sides. And that is the width of our rectangle. So enter that into Cricut Design Space. And this means it will go all the way around our rectangle when it comes to assembly. Then we need to calculate the height. So I know I'm using two millimeter thick wood. So for the smaller 1 12th scale, I'm only going to use the base rectangle and then one of the cutout rectangles. Whereas for the 1 6th scale, the larger one, I'm going to use two layers of the cutout rectangles and then the base layer. So for the bigger 1 6th scale, We've got three pieces and they're two millimeters thick. So we know that the width of our vinyl strip needs to be six millimeters. And then for the smaller tray in one twelfth scale, we've got two pieces, which are two millimeters thick, two times two equals four. So our strip height should be four millimeters. Sticking that marble vinyl onto our green standard group Cricut mat. And then we're going to cut out those two strips. Next, we're going to stick that marble vinyl directly onto our wood piece. Trim off that excess. Then place a second piece of vinyl on the other side of your wood. So you should have vinyl on both sides. Secure the wood onto a strong grip mat with painter's tape. I cut four passes, but this might vary depending on the width and type of wood you're using. And here's how it looks when it's all cut out. So now we're going to glue all of the layers together. You don't need to worry about removing any of the vinyl because once we put that outside edge around, you won't even be able to see those layers. And then stick that strip all the way around the outside of your marble tray. Make sure it sticks down firmly. And then for the inside piece to hide that wood, I've used white acrylic paint to just sort of paint in those edges. You could also make a strip for the inside, but I've decided to paint it white. And our marble trays are done in 1 12th and 1 6th scale. And I really like how that marble effect shows through on the vinyl. I think these trays would look really good in a kitchen or bathroom. Thank you so much for the love and support. I've almost reached 500 subscribers. If you haven't already, please subscribe below.